Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. Dave again at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle here in Billings, Montana. Today we're going to talk about materials to tie soft hackle flies. In another video I will show you how to tie some different soft hackle flies. As you can see here, soft hackle flies can be a variety of things from small to large, as small as this size 18, um, or starling and green to as large as this carry special. And I'll show you the different hackles that are appropriate for these flies. But the key element to a soft hackle is movement. And it's a very, I think, underfished and underappreciated style of fly in that it can be used to represent many different insects in many different stages of their lives. And I'll go into that more in the next video on tying soft hackles. But today I want to concentrate on the materials that you can use to make soft hackles. I'm going to separate these into two classes. One is raised hen hackle. These are the hens that provide the eggs, the brood stock for the rooster saddles and, and necks that we buy. And the other are game birds. So the first you have a couple of excellent hen necks, both by Whiting. One is a Herbert Minor brand, the other is a Whiting brand. To tell you the truth, I can't tell the difference in either one. They're both excellent hackles. What I like about head necks, and they're the easiest hackles to tie, is one, the feathers are long, as you'll see a contrast as we look at some of the game birds. And there are also a lot of very small feathers here that you simply cannot find in some of the game bird hackles. And they come in a variety of colors, a variety of shades to really meet whatever your needs are. So if you're beginning to tie soft hackles, this is really a, a first choice to think at, simply because it's the easiest and most versatile of the feathers. Then we have what's called a generic soft hackle. These actually are imported from China and the Philippines primarily. This is a neck. As you can see, it's not skinned up nearly as high on the neck as the genetic birds are. One of the primary reasons are these birds are raised primarily as food items. The hackle is secondary. So the hackle is not going to be as prime as you get with the gene genetic hackle. You do have some small feathers here. They are a bit broader than the uh, genetic hackle, but you can get them in a variety of colors. The feathers are a little broader than the genetic hackle, but still very useful. And you can also use these hackles for tailing materials on a variety of flies, especially the larger hackles in the back. The hackles are of sufficient length that you can tear them off and use them for things like a pheasant tail, copper john, other things that require hackle. Then we have the generic saddle patch, which is the back of the bird, just like our genetic rooster saddles. These, these feathers are very broad, fairly short, they do have a, a, a limited uh, need in soft hackles, but still some of the banding, the browns and these colors are very useful. And I will show you in the tying video how you can use longer hackles to compensate and still tie smaller flies with them. So those are a couple of choices for hen hackle. The last one, it may seem, may seem odd to you, this is the uh, Whiting American Hackle. It's actually a very low grade rooster hackle. However, for larger flies, it does have applications as these feathers are long and you have a full range of sizes. Not quite as small as the hen necks, of course, but if you're tying larger flies or even for woolly buggers, this is something to consider as well, is this American hackle. Now let's look at some game birds. First let's look at the Hungarian partridge. This is probably the most common thought of bird when people talk, talk about soft hackles. I'm sorry, this one is a little rough. But with a partridge like this, virtually every feather on this skin can be used for some type of soft hackle. You have all the neck feathers, the back feathers, the flank feathers. You can even use the feathers here, the primary and secondary feathers of the wing. And they vary in size from larger at the back to very small at the neck. 
Characteristically, they're rounded in shape, like this, whereas the hen hackle is much narrower in shape. The problem with some of these game birds is it's hard to find small enough hackle to tie these really small flies. But again, I'll show you in an upcoming video how to compensate for that. The nice thing about Hungarian partridge is the browns and the grays, the spotting of the feathers, it makes a fine soft hackle collar. You have a choice of buying a skin, which will run you about $35, or you can buy packled, a <laughs> packaged hackle, say that three times fast. I would really uh, warn you against buying packaged hackle. The problem is these feathers are simply ripped from the bird. Maybe a fourth of these feathers are useful. The rest of them will be torn up. The feathers won't be intact. If you're only going to tie a dozen soft hackles, then this is certainly an option. And they come in a variety of dyed colors. But if you intend to tie soft hackles of a variety of different sizes, I urge you very strongly to save up your money and buy a full skin like this. And you can also buy full skins in different colors, olive, purple, make some interesting effects for your soft hackles. Another game bird, um, of course the Hungarian partridge is non-native. It was imported in this country from the steppes of Russia. It's a popular game bird. A native game bird that we have in the, in the uh, high Midwest and in the eastern coastal plains is the rough grouse. It's a beautiful bird. This is the tail of the bird, the wing. Again, the, the primary and secondary um, covet feathers on the wings can also be used in soft hackles, as can any of the back feathers. You can see it's a different color than the partridge. It's more browns, tans, and grays. It has an interesting effect. Some of these feathers are distinctly barred up here. You can make some beautiful soft hackles from the grouse come in both a red and a gray phase. If you know any hunters who hunt grouse, beg them to save the birds for you because they're hard to find on the commercial market. Another introduced bird is the chucker. This was introduced in Idaho, I believe in the 1950s. This again is a full skin, so you have everything from the very smallest feathers at the neck all the way down to the larger feathers at the base. Some ex excellent banded feathers along the sides that have a lot of nice effects on a soft hackle. That's mostly, as you can see, the silver, the fawns, colors, the black, the grays. So it's another option for you for soft hackles. Just think about any kind of feather that has movement. So you want to stay away from stiffly hackled game birds. A very common and popular bird, of course, is the ring-necked pheasant. Also an introduced species, you're starting to see a line here. And both the rooster and the hen are used in a variety of soft hackle patterns. It's unfortunate that they stop skinning here at the band of the neck because these smaller feathers up on the neck are, are very valuable for tying uh, insects like jacids. But you can still use all these other feathers on the bird. The longest soft hackle that you're going to find is actually on the rump of a rooster pheasant. And you can buy these rump feathers just as a patch. You can also buy these rump feathers strung. The interesting thing about all of these game birds is that the base of each feather is called an aftershaft feather. It occurs on all of them, partridge, grouse, all of them. This is an insulated feather that grows against the base of this one but it too can be used as a soft hackle feather, okay? So the hackles on the, on the back of the pheasant are very long. They're used on flies like this carry special or no other hackle is long enough to use. And again, there's a multitude of beautiful colors and there's other uses for these feathers except just soft hackles, but it is a nice bird to use. The hen pheasant is also very good soft hackle material. I can get it open. It's much more of a buff cream color than the cockbird is. And again, I wish they wouldn't cut them so short on the neck. I skin my own further up. But you have uh, more browns, blacks than you do in the cockbird. 
And again, even the, uh, the feathers on the wing are useful. You have some small feathers here that can be used for smaller soft ackles. So really the entire bird is useful. You can also buy some of these pheasants, body feathers already strung like this. Alrighty, we'll move into a couple of the other lesser known game birds. Let's look at our common starling. Another import, it was in, introduced to the East Coast in the 1880s to control the gypsy moth, which was decimating the chestnut trees along the eastern shoreline. They were a source of food and wood. Of course, these birds didn't understand they had a role, and they found living in town was much easier than living out in the woods, so that's where they lived. They did not solve the gypsy moth problem. As you can see, they come in a variety of colors as well. When you want to tie really small soft hackles, like this green and, and uh, starling, then you'll need these small feathers at the top. I know they seem incredibly small and impossible to use. In the upcoming video, I will take your dare and I will tie a fly with one of these and show you that, yes, they can be used. But these are some of the smallest soft hackles that you'll find on the starling. The skins are inexpensive, and there's plenty of feathers all over the entire bird. Again, the wing as well has some useful feathers on it. So if you're looking at tying some 18 or smaller size soft hackles, the starling is really your best bet. And if you're looking for different colors, we have those as well. All right? Okay, guinea is another game bird. It's a native to Africa. I used to raise them, and they're also a good food bird. They come in a multitude of brilliant colors, easy feather to dye, and the spotting gives you some remarkable effects on a, on a soft hackle fly. The banding and the spotting are really eye-catching. The problem is the feathers are large, and unless you're tying, tying very large soft hackles, you're going to find this to be a problem, but I will show you uh, you can compensate for this feather length in an upcoming video so that you can use these feathers. All right, we'll get those out of the way. Mallard flank is another common feather dyed in a multitude of colors. It comes from the breast of the mallard. Most people don't consider these for soft hackles because, again, usually the feathers are quite long but they can be used in a compensated style. They can be used in a dubbing loop to give the effects that you want for the size of the fly you want. And once more, they come in a variety of colors. If I could get rid of this fly. And then don't overlook CDC. The prime CDC is a nice feather. It's a little thin, but you can double them up. And I'll show you again on the video how you can use these either in a dubbing loop or wrap directly for a soft hackle collar. They give a real nice effect and the advantage of CDC is, is that it does trap air bubbles and uh, adds to the lifeness of the fly under the surface. And then we have a new product that I haven't had a chance to play with much. This is from Whiting also. It's called Chickaboo. This is actually marabou from a chicken versus marabou from a turkey. So it is consequently much shorter. Comes in a variety of dyed colors. And like all marabou, it has a lot of in innate movement in it. So this is a material that I'm going to be exploring in the future. I think it'll make some very interesting soft hackle patterns. <laughs> All right, well that covers the materials for soft hackles. I'll be sure to watch our upcoming video on actually tying soft hackles. Thanks for joining in. And again, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much.